EA Interviews, Episode 57. Inspiration, Transformation, Success Stories, and the Imperfect Action Round. Seven days a week. Join Mario Ficini for today's Expert Authority Effect interview. Welcome, Expert Authority World. I am excited to be here on today's episode sharing with you how to bring more clients into your business, how to attract more, how to leverage the power of the internet for marketing purposes. Have you ever wanted to get your message out there? Have you ever wanted to speak more to more people? Do you think you need to be on front of 10,000 people on a stage 15 times a week? Or maybe just maybe there's a way to do it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I love speaking to audiences, but maybe there's a way you can do it with everything you have at your disposal right now. We're going to be talking about how you can achieve these goals with Dean Renfro. He's a John Maxwell certified consultant, speaker, trainer, and best-selling author. I'm going to bring him up right after we thank our sponsor. How would you like to grow your wealth easier than you think with the change you probably don't notice anyhow automatically? That's why I started the Compounding Interest Snowball, investing with acorns, and advise you do too. Get started simply and easily today at eainterviews.com forward slash acorns. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. Dean Renfro. Dean, it's great to have you. How are you feeling today? Hey, Mario. I'm glad to be on your show today. Appreciate it. I really feel well today. You know, some great things are going on in, in, in our world so to speak, to give every one of us the opportunity to do what we're doing today. And uh, I just appreciate the opportunity to be on your show today. I appreciate it really much. Well, I appreciate that. I know you have a lot of good stuff in store. We were chatting right before we went live here. So let's jump on into it. Tell me about your business. What? Uh, tell me your story. Why did it all come about and how did it come about? Yeah, well, I, I, kind of the basic part of my background is is I've been a, a church planner restart person for 40 something years. And so I've been in a lot of places. And of course, the whole thing was to work yourself out of a job because I didn't see myself as a long term pastor. I was a starter. So I always constantly had to have business. But one of the things I discovered really on, uh, on with uh, local people in the churches in the area was they, they didn't know how to market their business. And of course, as, as unspiritual as it sounds, you can only go as far as your money. And so we needed we needed things to happen to keep growing our congregation. So one of the things I learned was I've got to help these, the, these local business owners learn how to market their business so they can grow more and participate more in the things that they really valued and wanted to do. But as somebody said in the past, you know, what got them to where they were wouldn't get them to where they needed to go. And they, they needed a fresh set of eyes and ears to help them. And so that kind of that kind of bloomed into helping helping local business people learn how to grow their business more. So it kind of helped me start an agency of mark, helping people market. Excellent. So how, what are you really doing for them? How are you helping them? Well, of course, one of the biggest elements, like I said, is, is they, get, they get to a certain point, you know, and, and what they did worked. And of course, the tendency in human nature is to just try to keep doing more of that. And if I do more, it should work. And, and they're stuck. So as, coming from a different perspective, I'm able as an outside person, I'm able to look in and say, well, there's here's some things where you, you don't you don't have a follow up. Follow, sorry about that. Follow up, follow through system and what you're doing. And if you had that, you could you could get more business from the customers you have or the clients you have or the patients you have. Or you're not doing anything to engage new clients and customers to give them a reason to do business with you. We just tend to think they just will. They, they know I'm here. And they'll buy stuff from me or they'll get my service or they'll do this or they'll do that. And so part of the one of the things that we do, we have a five step process that helps them work through that. Can you share maybe just with the first one or two with me? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, the five step process is made up of, of really tried and true principles of, OK, if you can increase your leads, that is your prospects coming into your business by just 10 percent. OK, by just 10 percent. I'm not talking about blowing the, you know, the doors off of everything, just 10 percent. Because most businesses can't, to be honest, they can't handle a, lo- a lot of more business at one time. They're not. Why do you think that it. is? Well, they're used to doing business the way they've always done it. Okay. They haven't set up the systems or the people aren't trained. Uh, they, they don't have product. They don't have service capabilities. So they're not ready for just an influx of more business. And oftentimes they're just not, they're, you're just not thinking about, the process of growing very much at a time. Uh, and so it's a mindset thing. Oftentimes it's just, it's just that, that whole component. So we help them 
you know, look, okay, how do we get you more leads? If we can get 10% more leads, what is that going to do for your business? If we can get your current customer base to do business with you 10% more times a year, what is that going to do? Because, you know, your customers that you've worked and hard and paid for and worked hard to get and build trust and like and all those things for them, just think if they did business with you one more time every month than they do in the past, what is that going to do for your business? And suddenly the light bulb comes on for them and goes, oh, that makes sense. I, I can probably make that happen. So we help them design a process to do that. And, and that's just the first two of the five. And uh, because when people hear about doubling their business in a year, they think, oh, I've got to work twice as, you know, I've got to work twice as hard, spend twice as much. And we say, no, you, that's, that's not true. You don't have to do that. There's a way you don't have to do any of those things. If you just make incremental improvements in five areas, just 10%, you can almost double your profits in a year. Well, yeah, because it's that compound effect. I've told my clients before also when they're going, I want to have uh, 10,000 leads a month or whatever. First off, I qualify it and say, can you handle that? But what they don't realize is even with, let's say, 10 leads, who wouldn't like like 10 more leads? Oh, that'd be fantastic. But here's the kicker. What's the closing ratio? You right. might – 10 leads – for one person might be one new client, 10 leads for another might be six or eight. Right. So there's, there's all these little metrics and I'm glad you're talking about it because you know, how many people will go drive their car without a gas gauge that works or a speedometer? How confident would you be driving across the country if your speedometer was broken and you couldn't tell how much gas was there? How fast would you be going? Exactly. <laughs> right. And that, that's what you find, this mindset that permeates people uh, because, because they love what they do. They love their business. They wanted, that's why they got in business most of the time is to do that. And it, it, it gets real – blinders get on real fast in most businesses uh, because they, day in and day out, that's what they deal with, day in and day out. And they're this constant thing of grind that they work with. It never gives them any time to look outside. So I think the third-person objective – so to speak, is very the outside look. I call it the hand in the face principle. If this is what you meet every day, the solution can be right here and you will never see it. But the person outside can say, well, there's just, you know, if you make this adjustment, you, you're going to help your business grow. And so that's, that's kind of what we bring to the table for them. Yeah. One of the, my favorite things with coaching other entrepreneurs is I tell them I'm like the GPS you know, going down the road before you have a problem, we're going to avoid it instead of crap, the pothole just threw the rim off the car and you got a big problem. Yep. What is the one thing you see going through all the people you work with? What, what would you say is a commonality that holds them back? I think probably one of, one of the most, uh, the, probably the common, most common element that you see with local business owners is, is they've been bombarded with so many messages of hope. Uh, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to do this for you. We're going to do this for you. And they tried this and they spent money here and they spent money there. And nobody has brought to them something that works first. In other words, it's, it's we're going to practice on you. You know, we're going to try this out. On, I mean, that's what they begin to feel like is I don't need any, you know, as my dad told me a long time ago, it looks like you do stuff, get good at it, but then don't keep practicing it. You don't need any more practice. Just go do it. And oftentimes these business owners find themselves, they feel like they're being practiced on. So what we try to do is come in here and, and help them in the mindset perspective of saying, we're going to give results first. Uh, you know, no results, no charge kind of approach where, where they are comfortable with the idea of this works. This works. Why? Because my phone's already rang, because I already got a lead, because one of my clients is buying more stuff already because I've, I've already been able to raise my prices just by doing, because I didn't know I could offer value offer this and get more money for the same thing I was already selling. So, you know, and we were able to reduce expenses over here. And so first thing you know, before you even really get started with them, you've given them an idea, you've shown them that you can make the money. And oftentimes that's what I create first. I said, well, let me just make it for you first and then you can pay me. And, and, and they love that. Why, why would you not do that? You know, and that's that's so fresh and new for them uh, because they've just been beat up by promise after promise after promise that's never delivered, and 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 they're just tired of hearing it. 
I would have to agree. One of my favorite things to do is structured performance-based deals and have that immediate results in advance like you're talking about because there's so many people. They've even pitched me. They're like, oh, da, 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 whatever. And I, I ask them, I go, well, how many of your product have you bought? How many of your product have you invested in? And it's interesting to see these salespeople that don't even believe in their own stuff. Or right. I really don't want to say web designers and graphic designers. However, I, it, it's just rampant. So many of them, and I'm not putting them down because we've offered those services to people in the past too. And it's a hard thing to qualify unless you have the lead gen component with it. But the point is when you're coming to sales, when you have all the confidence like through the roof with that – <coughs> excuse me, with all the speedometer and the gas gauge, you're going to be going a million, 150 miles. At, well, I'm not uh, allegedly, you're <laughs> going to be going faster down the road than if you're less confident. And when I ask people, I go, why don't you have this money back guarantee? Or why don't you have this offer that's ironclad that you know you can deliver on? Right. Like when I uh, take people through the book publishing in eight weeks, I know I can deliver on that like clockwork. Right. So there's, there's no doubt in my mind it's possible. But when you don't have that level of confidence, it's real hard to sell anything. Yes. How do you help people get past that when they're coming to you and you go, we're going to restructure it this way, which is different from the way you may have been doing it in the past. What do you do when you get that resistance of them going, I don't know if this will work or, you know, you say, hey, how about we do it like this? And you go, well, what I, I've heard, had other people say that sounds good, but what if it doesn't work? I go, then why are you selling a product you don't know if it's going to work or not? How yeah, do you I, get past that? Yeah, I think, I think well, one of the ways that I try to help structure that is to uh, create the environment for it first. I'll give you an example. Today, I met with a, 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 a you know, fairly affluent guy that has several companies, and he had talked to me, and, and I had, uh, he had reached out to me and, and said, hey, I, I somebody referred me to you. I'd love to talk with you, have you for lunch, you know, send me your information. And normally he's used to getting it, you know, the, the typical way. And I said, well, just do this, text this to this. And he replied back and said, that was cool. How do I get one of those? <laughs> you know, well, when I showed up there to talk with them, which wasn't about that at all. Uh, but I, I, I was able to insert myself into the conversation for him and which is often what I do for a client. So, well, here, let me help you get some business first, right? And so, so oftentimes when, when I'm first contacted, I, I set up a structure where I'm not immediately having to, to create something for them like tomorrow, you know, even if it's lead gen. So if it's in a lead generation process, I'll say, okay, well, you need this many more clients. Great. Okay, well, let's, and I work, work on them. But all the time behind the scenes, I'm creating a structure to already have leads in place when I say, Hey, let's try this. Okay, well, maybe, I, I don't know, we've tried that before. We'll, we'll wait, just wait. Give me a day or two here. And then their phone rings or somebody walks in the store or somebody comes in the restaurant or somebody buys a product and they're like, wow, that works. And so part of it is, is if you can show results up front for people, it, it, it's pretty much what I call the ball game's over, it, unless they're just not really going to do it ever anyway. And it's better to find out early than it is after you're in it. Uh, and, and they're trying to find excuses. So, so part of that is create, create early on results, help them get past the mentality of well, what, what, where will you be next year if you keep doing what you're doing? And we all know the definition of insanity doing, if you always do what you've always done, you've always got what you got right now. And I said, how's that working? My mama taught me this. How's that working for you, son? And usually when you can bridge that with them, they'll, the, the, the light bulb will come on and go, well, you're right. What I'm doing right now is not getting me where I really want to go. So let's, you know, and once you walk them through and you have a result, the phone rings, the product sells, somebody comes in their store, then it's like, this might work. Because all they need, I found with most business owners, is they just need a little bit of hope. They just need one success. They're not looking for 10,000 people to show up. They're not looking for 10,000 sales tomorrow. They're just looking for one because nobody's given that to them up front, you know, kind of approach. So that's how I kind of get past that. With all the clients you've worked with, what's the biggest success story you could share with us? I tell you what, and, and, and I love to tell this story. Uh, I, I, we were in the process of, of uh, restarting a congregation in, a, in an area and there was a new Chick-fil-A. Well, I probably shouldn't say that. 
Sorry, cut that. Uh, Why and there not? was a, there was awesome. a new rest, there was a new restaurant there, and he'd been in business about three years, and he'd gotten up to one and a half million a year in, in deal, and he was stuck. He couldn't get past that. And of course, we would go eat there a lot uh, with with them because that was kind of our preferred place to go, and uh, it lined up with our values and all that kind of thing, all the things that people do what they do. But but we got to talking, and I said, I think I can help you because I've been coming in here enough to already know what your issue is. So he set up a training. Uh, we brought his whole team in, and uh, I'm also a certified uh, personality profile, uh, disc personality profile, and I had all his team take the test, and I have some particular tools I use. And so we got them all in a room, and I laid what we call the team sheet in front of him, and he on his own said, I know what my problem is. I've hired a bunch of me's, and I got them all on the same – I got them all on the same uh, same schedule in the daytime. They're all on the same shift. And no wonder I can't grow my business because I got too many me's in the wrong place. And so he redid that process. And we kept bringing his, his, all of his teams and all his team leaders through this training to basically discover who they were, what, what role they best fit in in his restaurant. And he went from, from one and a half to three uh, in over a year. And they launched his second store, and we did it again with him, and he got pl- up over four and a half, and now he's launching his his uh, his uh, third store, uh, all based on this one step uh, step of getting the right coaching, helping people discover who they are, where do they fit in best, because sometimes that's all you need. You don't need a better project product, you don't need a better widget. You don't. You, sometimes you just need the right people in the right seat on the bus going the right direction, and that's all he needed. But he didn't know how to do. He couldn't see it. He took somebody from the outside to step in. And I I love that telling that story because it was such a, a a success process of just helping people discover who they are and and where they fit in the puzzle. And and that's true for business owners as well. It's hard to see outside of yourself. I mean, myself included, it's why I hire coaches because you know, you're good at your strength zone and you know what your power medium is and all these great things. But, you know, straight up, I'm not even looking over here. I don't care. It's not yep. important to me right now. Yeah. And oftentimes for him, for him, he was hiring quality, good people, but he was hiring himself, which that's normal. That's what people do. But he didn't realize that's not who he needed in places, you know. And so he was he was handicapping himself every time he did this. And he it's thought a he comfort thing right that you right were talking right. about earlier being comfortable. Yep. You, you know, oh, I'm, even if you want to hire a coach, well, I want someone who's not going to beat me up too much. Well, th- that's not who you need. That's who you want. Right. Yep. So that's with right. everything you've done for business and the people you've helped, what made you want to launch your book? Well, well, part of so two, two components, mainly one, one was to give, uh, one was to tell the story. Everybody, I, I firm believer, everybody has a story in them and there there's people in the world that need to hear your story. Because they're not going to be moved by that person's story or that person's story. They're going to be moved by your story because they identify with, with your, vo- your voice, not literally, but they could. Your, the voice of how you tell it, uh, the conditions in which you came out of, and, and then how it happened for you. And it's going to inspire them. So one, of the, one process was to tell my story. You know, I came from this. Uh, this is how life was. I found this. This is how life is different because I did it. And you can too. And so part of that process came about to just be able to, to tell a story. But then the second thing is I, I've learned at least in what I was doing in, in launches of, uh, of, of like this book here, uh, the leadership book was part of leading a group of people is you got to get everybody on the same page. In other words, they have to be thinking about the same thing on the same at, you know, in t- with timing, they have to be talking the same language they have to they have to all kind of be guided. Well, it's hard to do that unless you are consistently putting something in front of them that everybody is reading the same thing. Everybody is talking about the same thing. Everybody's hearing the same language. Everybody's getting the same thoughts. And I don't mean literally the same thoughts, but in other words, their their thinking patterns are being developed as you go along. So I wrote I wrote this leadership journal as uh, with quotes and, and and thought processes to help guide a team of people to get on the same page. Another success story with that is I, I did that with an insurance company uh, and, and, and the, the manager over the whole sales team said that, you know, that was the best thing they ever did. 
because all of a sudden his team got on on the same plane. When they met, they were all able to to have a dialogue about what they were doing and where they were and, and the things that were growing their lives, the things they were struggling with, the things that were liabilities to them. And so oftentimes, you know, that's, you've just got to, you've got this thing you've got to get out. And for me, that, that was what, what that was for me is I got to tell my story and talk about what's in, you know, what's in, changed my life. Cause I know it'll change somebody else's life. And then because of the, my coaching training with the John Maxwell team is I've got to help somebody else. I've got to help somebody else do this too. And so that's kind of what brought about my books. I'm hearing that servant's heart. That's what I've always seen and known about you. And that's what I'm hearing again right now. That's true. That's awesome. Tell me about video. Why? I mean, why not write blog posts? Why do I see you on video doing live streams all the time? Uh, well, what, well, of course, I, I've been I've been in the speaking business for you know forty five years doing this uh, on a lot of different ways, and it just comes easier for me to to you know I, I forget what the statistic is seventy eight percent or whatever Americans are afraid to get up and talk in front of people. Well, I've been doing that since I was sixteen years old, so. So get in front of a bunch of people, whether it's two people or thousands of people is, it has not been a problem. So it's felt natural to me to get, to get on Facebook live and to do video and to do training. Uh, and, and partly it's because of my personality makeup is I don't have to have somebody in front of me to talk to me, you know, to be able to talk to them. I can see them in my mind's eye and, and I can speak to them. So video to me made a na- just a natural bridge to get on and do that. And then, you know, then, you know, of course the hardest part of uh, video, as you know about this is, is getting mapped out what you're going to talk about. Well, because I'm in the John Maxwell team and you can see all the books, I'm a prolific reader, you know, I'll probably read a book a week. So I got a huge exposure to a lot of different things and it makes it easy to talk about all kinds of things, you know, and, uh, and having a formula, is probably what makes it easier to do video for me. It's just, you got, I got this process I follow and that's it. That's, it's easy to get on here and do it. Well, I would agree. It's uh, one of your strengths and it's a natural compliment to what you're doing for sure. And I'm glad you do because I've caught uh, a fair amount of your, your content and I, I enjoy it myself too. So I'm going to ask you uh, one of our, it's the newest thing I'm doing. I'm calling it the, uh, Expert authority roller coaster because in our business we have ups and downs. Would you agree? Yes. I'm going to ask you one of these 12 questions I came up with before we go to the imperfect action round and then we'll jump into the imperfect action round. So let's go with who is an entrepreneur you would love to meet and have a conversation with? Uh, Probably at this stage right now, Russell Brunson. Uh, I've, I've consumed his stuff. Um, uh, I'd really just like to sit down and just, you know, I love I love his energy. I love I love what he's been able to do. Uh, that he's probably at least for me right now the person I would just like to sit down right here and have a conversation just like this, you know. Uh, and, and of course, you may uh, your audience may not know who Russell is, but he's he's the if you've heard of ClickFunnels, he's the he's the guru of ClickFunnels. And uh, very successful entrepreneur does a lot of uh, philanthropy work with the with with what he has made from from uh, having a very successful business, you know, schools in Africa and and all kinds of things. So he he's a giver, and, and I think people like Mario, you 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 pointed out, people who have servants' hearts and givers' hearts recognize that in each other pretty quickly. It's kind of a kind of a, a, a kind of a mystic thing that goes out in front of us and around us and people recognize it game recognize game right yes exactly and so that that's for me that that's probably the person at least right now that I would like to meet yeah he's a great guy I would uh I think that's totally doable truthfully I know that's totally doable oh yeah I just need to go up there <laughs> I mean that's a great thing he he is he's one of those people that wants to be accessible to people. He wants to sit down and talk with people and, and hear their story and that kind of thing. And you have to appreciate that kind of, um, that kind of spirit and attitude toward, I know where I came from and I, I'd just soon sit down and talk with you as I would, you know, the next Tony Robbins person, you know, and he, and that's the kind of guy he is. And I, I, I get that. Excellent. 
Well, I appreciate you for sharing that with us. We're going to thank our sponsor and come back for the imperfect action round. Invest automatically, save for later, and spend today. That's why I love Acorns. I used to think spare change didn't make a difference and saving and investing was an old-fashioned manual process. It's not. And it's a game changer. If you're not leveraging compounding interest in your business and life, automatically, you're missing out. Acorns not only makes saving and investing easy and automatic, it makes it even more valuable by investing with diversified portfolios, spare change, extra cash, and rounding up everyday transactions. You can even set recurring monthly investments in the amount you desire. To make good great, there is also a debit card option that will continue to help you save and invest even further when you spend, plus no minimum balance and overdraft fees. Now, for the cherry on top. They have partnered with 250-plus companies and brands, and growing, with their Found Money program to invest back a percentage into your account with the everyday purchases when you shop, two of which you're probably listening to this right now through an Amazon or Apple device. Get started profiting from your everyday life and business simply and easily today at eainterviews.com forward slash acorns. Once again, that's eainterviews.com forward slash acorns. All right, Dean, are you ready to take imperfect action? We're ready. We're going to try it. Yes, I believe in that. First question I got for you. What is the fastest path to the cash in your experience? Uh, for most business people, what I see the fastest path to cash is to make create a simple process for people to engage with you so that they can spend money with you. And 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 for me, I see for most business owners, that's in the digital world, at least, that that is a, what I call the one-click process, and it's, Russell comes from that. But but it, but you know everybody everybody is on their phone, and so the quicker you can get people engaged in a phone, then the quicker you can get them engaged in some kind of transaction process. So I look at that as that's a fast path for cash, and like like you go in a restaurant. Many times you leave a restaurant, and 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 they didn't get your name, they didn't get anything about you, and they just expect you to come back when they could have just taken a simple process and engage you on your phone and then they can keep you engaged and get you to come because one, one customer coming back one more time a month is, is a 12% increase in profit 12, just one time. And so it, it's just simply making it easy for, for customers to spend money with you is some simple. Sometimes is one, just create one tool that will give you a click and you're, and they're connected to you. Excellent. Number two, what is the biggest problem you see your prospects making and the fastest way they can fix it? I think for most big brick and mortar stores, uh, and even speakers and trainers and coaches, uh, people that, uh, that are in any kind of network direct sales thing is they don't have a follow-up follow-through system. Just like I talked about in the restaurant, they, they, they don't have any way to engage it, but then they have no way to follow up, follow through. You go into the store and you buy something, you buy it and you leave and, and they never know who you are. If you're on the stage and you're talking to people, and, and there's a rush to the back of the room. Nobody's ever, you know, you're going to get connect connect to a few people, but what about the rest of the room? If you're selling a book, you know, one person buys your book. Okay. They bought your book, but did you give them a way to keep connecting to all the other great stuff that you have? Cause that book, you didn't pull out of thin air. You, there's a lot of things went into that. What else can you connect them to, to do that? And I think the fastest way today to fix that is to, to engage people with, with digital technology that, that makes it one, and I've said it already. I'll say it again. I hate to keep beating beating a dead horse here, but but it's one click. Create environments that that bring about one click transaction. Because hey, eight seconds is not very long today for people, and they're moving on. They're just keeping scrolling through that thing, and you have to create that. That's why I love video, and that's why I love one click technology. You know, Amazon uh, comes to mind also. Keep that barrier of uh, entry very low, and you'll increase the conversions, no doubt. Yes. All right. Third and last question for the imperfect action round. How would you say is the best way to maximize customer lifetime value? You know, the, everybody that's engaged in any kind of marketing process, which is oftentimes brick and mortar stores and even authors and speakers and coaches and and, and, and people in sales don't realize is content. Pe people are hungry for content. I mean, if you stop and think about how does, why does Google work like it works? It's all about content. Why does YouTube work? It's all about content. You know, why, why does Pinterest work? It's all about content. Why does Amazon work? It's all about content and product, giving people what they want. 
uh, and what and even what they need. But the process there, oftentimes for business owners, is is they don't have a way to increase the, their value in the eyes of their client and customer. They they're a you know one time sale. Okay, well can I get them to do it again? Versus how do I value stat what I do? And and if you take a brick and mortar store. And we're all familiar with this. You walk up, you buy something. The first thing they ask is, do you want to buy a warranty for that? Okay, well, people do, people don't. But but what do you do beyond that? What do you do beyond that? And that is getting people engaged in an ongoing process of giving value, whether it's education uh, to them about the products or other products, or, it, or is it uh, experiences that they do, or rewarding people for what they do. You know, hey, you spent this with me. How would you How would you like to get a you know a free free $300 gift card for a hotel stay. Do you travel? Yeah, I do. Here, well, here, let me give you that. So it, it's it's giving people stuff that they don't expect that keeps build, building value over and over and over again over a period of time. It's not a one and done kind of thing, which, hey, when you're busy and trying to run your business, oftentimes that's that's all the time you have for. And that's that's the struggle of, that business owners don't realize is you, 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 you don't do this well. So get somebody, as you mentioned earlier, Get somebody that does and they'll pay for themselves and over and over and over again because they're able to stack that value out of those customers because that's a huge way of doubling your business. I appreciate you for the insights on that because it's so important, like you're saying, give the results in advance, but also keep the value going during and after the, you know, you, you've done business with them because that's what people want. So many people, I felt that myself too. It's like, are you just looking at me as a transaction or are you looking to build a relationship down the road even if we only uh, do business once a year? Do you actually care or not? Right. So with that being said, what is one book you would recommend that's made the biggest impact on your life? Uh, pro oh, wow. Uh, somebody asked that question this morning on a Facebook feed and I said, I, you know, uh, I can't answer that because I'm a prolific reader. I don't know that there's been one book that made one big, huge difference. Right. I'm going to lead you a little bit. I think in the grand scheme of life and knowing you and your background, there's one book you could recommend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, uh, f probably for, for me, the biggest uh, impact book is uh, uh, After the Bible, first of all, After the Bible, uh, because it, it's a container of truth and most everything you find that works in this world has some connection to the Bible. Thank you for saying it. I have asked this dozens of times. And if you noticed, I didn't say business book. Right. Right. So, cause that's, cause that to, to me, if you, if you understand truth and, and whether it's in business or in the spiritual world or in your social life or in your relationships, the truth is truth. And you'll find that that somewhere is connected to what the Bible has to say. Uh, you may not know it. You may not recognize that it does, but it does. It's one of my uh, favorite things to look up because I, I would also say uh, the Bible for number one. And also, if you look at a lot of the self-help books, the principles they have in there, you can directly correlate to scripture in them. It's like all this came from somewhere. Where did they learn it from? Where did Napoleon Hill learn it from? Right. You know, it, there was somewhere. Let's go back in time a little bit. So, yep. Very Appreciate true. that recommendation. That's you awesome. Bet. Where can people find you to get more info on you? Uh, my website, uh, DeanRenfro.com. You can find me there. Uh, my marketing business is Your Marketing DR, Your Marketing Doctor.co. You can read my blog there. We have a lot of great stuff there. Uh, and and so, you know, of course, Facebook page as well. But, uh, but uh, you know, that that's where a lot of, you know, I put a lot of stuff out through those, those, through that medium. Very good. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure, Dean. I look forward to connecting with you again. Thanks for coming on. You're welcome. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity really to be on the show. I appreciate that very much. All right, Expert Authority World. We have another great episode. Hope you got a lot out of it. We will see you on the next one. Have a great day and God bless.